Hey folks, how you doing? It's James JT at the movies, and I'm back today with my lovely girlfriend Laura. Hello. Um, and this is going to be the first of a monthly series that we're going to do, where we're going to take a look at primarily films that Laura's not seen. Um, as, as the idea of the series sort of came off the back of our Alien and Predator marathon, uh, which by uh, the time this is released, both parts will now be on YouTube. Um, and the idea was to show Laura a lot of films um, that, that she's never seen and maybe sort of have a bit of a discussion just for, I don't know, five to ten minutes or so and, and just sort of gauge her reaction to watching some of these all-time sort of brilliant films for, um, you know, like a first-time watch sort of thing. Um, and then me and Laura were talking the other day mm. um, and we actually found about a film I'd not seen before that I'd had in the collection um, and we, we thought, well, why not start this off with Laura showing me something? Yeah. Um, do you want to sort of talk a bit so, more? So I'm a massive Danny Boyle fan. I've seen a lot of his films over the years and we were talking about him just the other day and the film Shallow Grave came up. I have not seen this film in years, but I remember really enjoying it. And you said you'd never seen never, it? Never seen it. I picked the, the DVD up years ago, um, probably not long after me and you had got together. And I think it was probably on the back of your dad talking about yeah, it. Yeah, Because he's a big fan of this film, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He really is. It's uh, He could not stop talking about this. And he showed it me one day, and I really liked it. And so I remember, I remember picking it up anyway after a discussion with, uh, with Laura's family about it. Um, and then, as, as usual, with, with the collection sort of thing, I get something, and then if I don't watch it immediately, it gets filed away with the rest of it, and I'll, I'll get round to it in due course. But we were talking about Danny Boyle and, and some of his films, and you know his, his departure from No Time to Die, I think, was what, uh, what sort of started the conversation. But, um, yeah, anyway, Shallow Grave came up, and I'm like, oh, we've got to watch that. Um, so, Friday night just gone, we did. Yeah. He definitely did. And what did you think? I, I loved it, Laura. Um, should we should we tell the folks at home that uh, maybe haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while a bit of a, just a brief recap yeah. as to what the jumping off points are? So Christopher Eccleston, Kerry Fox, and Ewan McGregor play three flatmates, and they're looking for a fourth. The film's open. Film opens with them interviewing potential people. None of them fit the bill, but then they find a mysterious man named Hugo, and he becomes the new flatmate. He mysteriously dies at the start of the film but he leaves behind a big suitcase full of money and it just spirals into madness from there really they try to decide what they want to do with the body what they want to do with the money and that's what makes this such a good film uh, i really really liked it because this this film obviously these guys are all young working professionals um but you know they're, they're probably meant to be in their late 20s early 30s at an absolute push um and, and rather than thinking sort of sensibly about actually our new flatmates just died and we need to get the you know the the police the paramedics and the emergency services out to to deal with it they they start rifling through his stuff and find this suitcase full of money mm. um and and it like like you see so sort of mention it perfectly really it sort of does just descend into mm. madness at first they're like well we're going to ring the police and then they're like yeah but there's a suitcase full of money and it's like, yeah, but we've got to ring the police. And then it gets left and left and left and left to the point where they even say, like, the guy's starting to smell. So they've clearly left it too long now and have no more plausible deniability in, in not reporting it. So they decide that they're going to have to get rid of him themselves, don't yeah. they? And and it like it just goes for absolute madness. The, the acting's superb, mm. though. Uh, Christopher Eccleston is, is primarily the character that, you would say descends into in into real madness in it um and really goes off the off the deep yeah. end but he does it subtly he, he does yeah he does it subtly uh, he takes the money he wraps it in a plastic bag hides it in a water tank in the attic and he, and then moves into the attic he himself and he's, he just just sort of becomes this really creepy yeah. sort of like um and then then it's it's later transpired that the guy that had moved in with them uh was a was a villain uh and had been involved in you know some some dodgy dealings or whatever and some of his sort of associates come looking for him and then chris freckleson's character ends up sort of killing him mm -hmm. and uh, and it's mental sort of like you know because then you and mcgregor and kerry fox are sort of watching him and sort of thinking oh Good grief! This guy in who he used to be no. sort of thing because he's he's probably the more sort of mild mannered and sort of timid's not the word, but I, a better word escapes me sort of thing. Mm. 
there's a scene in it where he starts drilling holes in the ceiling and he starts spying on his flatmates. He's crawling around looking through all these little holes and it's just like, this is not the man from the start of the film. No, he's a really sort of uh, silly, sort of jokey bloke at the start of the film and he's really, really serious. But, it, you know, it's sort of like they all start to not trust each other, mm, don't they? Like, yeah. Obviously, Christopher Eccleston uh, makes it most known because obviously he secures the money in the attic of the property and then moves up in there with it and sort of guards it and when let's say the the two other bad guys try to go up and get it he kills them and that mm. sort of sends the message to Ewan McGregor and Kerry Fox that they can't really mess with him but she buys a ticket to Rio de Janeiro uh, and we don't know whether or not she's planning on double crossing both of them and stealing the money or whether she's just scared for repercussions and, and basically is just planning on fleeing and then Ewan McGregor's character is a reporter, mm. um, and he ends up getting roped in to end up co- uh, you know, covering the story that mm. unfolds because they've they've disposed of these bodies um, and buried them in the shallow graves. Um, but obviously they've they've not done a, a cracking job at it, even though they think that they have done. And um, and then he gets brought in to sort of cover it from a press angle, and then the police sort of get alerted to the fact that maybe he knows more than he's letting on because of his reactions at the crime mm. scenes and sort of. And it's really clever yeah. to say it was done on such a small budget. Uh, they had a budget of a million pounds, which in the you know mid nineteen nineties when this came out wouldn't have gone far, would it? Yeah. Definitely not, no, but the film's really well put together. It's very atmospheric, definitely. You get to see, you see the transition of mental stability in the characters. Like I said, at the start, Christopher Eccleston refuses to do any of the dirty work when it comes to disposing of the bodies, and then later on, he's doing it himself. And, and I think that, that ends up sort of being the breaking point for him, doesn't it? Because mm. they're like, right, okay, well, we can't all just sit here and say that we don't want to do it if we're all three equal partner saying we're going to pretend this guy never existed and steal his money then we're going to have to come up with a fair way of doing it and so they draw straws and then Eccleston's character ends up drawing the short straw and having to do the work but he's been the one most vocal about mm-hmm. like you say not wanting to get involved with yeah. uh, disposing of, of the chap's body um, and then by the end of the film he's, he's you know like you say he just doesn't care mm. uh, at all and he's um, sort of you know, that he's disposing of the two further goons that break in and you see what he's doing. But then he's a lot more careless and I think that's what leads the police to yeah. to finding it. Um, John Hodge, the bloke who wrote the film, as I always do when we do these videos and I want to talk about them, I, I look up sort of tidbits. He's the guy who plays the, not the main inspector, but you know the guy where he's like, and write that down, use numbers and words if you want. Uh, the guy who's scribing away is, yeah. is the writer of the film, but... Uh, but yeah, for a million quid, they did um, they did really well with this, and I think this is a film that's gone on to launch Eccleston and um, oh, what's he called? Ewan McGregor. Yeah. Apparently, Kerry Kerry Fox was the sort of like the named star at the time, but actually, as as time's gone on, obviously Eccleston's gone on to play like Doctor Who and John Lennon, and obviously Ewan McGregor's done countless things, but you know, primarily like Star Wars, I think would be the big one, and then the stuff like Train Spotting in there as well, yeah. and. Um, you know, loads of, of other things as well. Um, but yeah, it's obviously a, a bit of a jumping off point for, for these two fantastic actors' careers as well. Mm. Great introduction, Pace Laura, for this. I, I really, really liked that yeah. film. Really good film. Mm. The only criticism I had with it, and this just comes down to my personal preference for, for how I like stories to be wrapped up, is the ending's fairly ambiguous. And we actually both sat there at the end of it because I went, well, he's going straight to jail, and they so what's he laughing about? And you're like, no, he's got away with it. Um, and then, then we sort of debated it for a bit, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, because in my opinion, obviously, she's the one that's gone. She's gone to Rio, not realising that... Well, something's happened, I won't say what, but something's happened with the money, not realising that. She's gone to Rio, he's there on the floor with a knife through his shoulder. She's the one that's going to be found suspicious... Because Christopher Eccleston at this point is he's just, dead. He's gone. He's dead. So they can't implicate him. She's once gone, so she's going to be found for the murder. So. But I, I think, I think that the police had already cottoned on to what had happened, and that now you and McGregor's going to be the one that solely takes the fall. Because, like you say, she's on the plane to Rio. Eccleston's dead, and so that leaves him. And there's just no way to explain that. But yeah, so I, I'm, I'm not really a massive fan of overly ambiguous endings. I, I like things to be sort of 
wrapped up in a in a neat little bow. Um, but but that that's just my personal preference, and it didn't take anything away from the enjoyment of the film. Um, and I suppose even me saying I prefer things wrapped up, it does give you a talking point and a point yeah. of discussion. Um, but uh, I think Danny Boyle has, uh, I don't know whether he's intentionally done it, but I couldn't find any interviews with him or even John Hodge where they've, they've specified what they think happens next sort of thing. So I guess it really is a, an open to your point, own yeah. interpretation. Yeah, talking yeah. point. I, I did really enjoy that film and just had a, had a really great time with it. So thanks very much for showing it, Laura. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really glad that I got round to it now. Yeah. I think I would give that film... Seven and a half out of ten. What about you? I'm giving it an eight and a half. So thank you very much for watching, folks. This has been our first episode of primarily what was meant to be a series of me showing Laura films that she's not seen before that I thought that she should see. But after that discussion we've ended up having on, uh, <laughs> on Danny Boyle, you've ended up showing me this one. And you know what? I'm really grateful for it. I really enjoyed mm. that film. What were your thoughts on Shallow Grave? Leave us a comment down below and let's have a natter about it. And if you've liked the video as well, don't forget to drop us a thumbs up. really would appreciate that. If you've liked this video, and you like videos talking about collecting physical media, reviewing films, uh, unboxing DVD and Blu-ray updates, just enjoying film as an art form in general and everything that sort of falls under that umbrella, think about subscribing to my channel as I say, uh, as that's the sort of content that I aim to bring you. And most importantly, um, as we're all going through these uh, very weird and wonderful and trying times at the moment, continue to stay safe folks, take very good care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.